Hey, hey, you're out in the garage with Easy Jeezy. Today I want to make a video about lug nuts and studs and different options and something that happened with me that uh, initiated all of this. Although it's always, for the last 30 years, been a concern and having problems. Now there's just nothing better than having a stock steel wheel with a stock lug nut. And here is a stock lug nut. And here is the stock wheel. Now this is what they call a ball end. And most people that aren't familiar with Volkswagens kind of curse these things because it's a lot easier to hang a wheel on a brake drum that's got studs on it like an American car and it's what you're used to but that's not what Volkswagen decided to do and I have no explanation why this is what they came up with and it's fine with me and you can see uh, hopefully you can see this it fits inside that little dished area and the securely holds your wheel these are very light wheels see the this is the early uh, wide 5 version and then you have the newer style that took a larger uh, wheel nut and it was a 14 millimeter and your short one is a smaller diameter the wheels are a little bit heavier they fit on most balancers a little bit easier but uh, that was a change that they made when they went from the wide 5 to the 4 now of course this is an off-road wheel for the Baja it's a 69 and that's the kind of rims that uh, I'm running on it this one here is 8 inch and it's probably going to receive my new tire but this lug nut will obviously just flop in the hole it won't work now why are we talking about these 12 millimeter stock lug nuts well the fact is this is the rear wheel that's been on my tub buggy for the last 15 years and if you look that thing just drops in there real nice that's a stock wheel nut and it fits very similar to the stock steel wheel now this is a, a very thick aluminum wheel and they tapered it and you it was made by centerline there's tons and tons of aftermarket wheels out there but it was made so it could work with a stud or a wheel nut as long as it had the ball end now the reason I'm telling you this story is I've had the wheels on and off so many times on this car over the years and a lot of times I was using a chatter gun and when I was putting a wheel on the lug nut acted like it was stripped matter of fact I uh, put a piece of tape around it and uh, I kept it oh here it is right here it's in this bag I don't know if I can do this one-handed but I decided to keep it and set it aside um, <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna be able to do it but you can see where the the threads are uh, they're there but the edges are knocked off I'm not gonna take it off um, so at any rate I thought okay this is not safe it's not a good idea and I wanted to put those wider heavier 30 inch tall tires nine and a half inches wide on 10 inch wide rims by golly you better have those things anchored there's no messing around and these are the aftermarket MP disc brakes on all four corners so I had ordered a uh, set of lug nuts from MP and these were supposed to have this is the 12 by 1.5 ball end lug nut and sure enough I took it out of the package and I looked at it and I said oh okay that has got more threads on it so this weak hole I'm gonna do away with this one and I'm gonna put this longer MP thread and I'm gonna quit using that chatter gun because for one thing it's a chrome bolt and the chatter guns will usually uh, tear off this cheap uh, single coat chrome that they do nowadays and I put it on the car and I did not like the way it fit even though it's claimed to be a ball end you can see how it actually it recesses clear down in there I'm not sure whether I'm making full contact here 
and I was using this lug nut on there and it looks pretty shiny. The end is rough where I tightened down, but this is not a good solution. Not a good solution. That's just not what I'm doing on a 10 inch wide rim with a 30 inch, you know, a 35, 40 pound tire. No way. So that had to go. So what I did is I did various things. I've run studs before on many of my sand cars. Now this is a whole can of worms when you start ordering uh, things other than the original Volkswagen ones because there's a lot of different stud kits out there. There's a lot of ball and lug nuts out there but most of them are 14 millimeter. Those are just common as could be but finding a ball and uh, 12 millimeter either a nut or a decent bolt is difficult. Now I went to California Imports and I was looking at their website. I've been buying a lot of stuff from them lately and <clears throat> this is what I came up with. I bought a actual, I bought a package kit. It came 40 pieces. It was the ball seat 12 by 12 millimeter ball seat studs and lug nuts. And I was a little apprehensive. That's a very good price. If you were to go to Napa or O'Reilly's or any of those places and order uh, lug nuts, they're going to want like $3, three dollars and more a piece. And I've done that before and they weren't the right ball. Honda uses a ball end lug nut. Now, this stud, I thought, well, at that kind of price, this can't be very sturdy. But I'm very pleased to say it, this is this is working out good. This is a 5.5 millimeter uh, Allen wrench, and what I suggest you do is you put the the short end threads in, and put either no sealant on it or a small amount of either blue Loctite. I avoid using red Loctite because uh, that's just me. A lot of places they, they specify it, particularly even on engines builds, I stay away from it because it, it really, <laughs> it locks it down more than I want to deal with later. And I have a tendency to change my mind and change things. And you can put these in drums, you can put these in the MP disc brake uh, package, and they go in a little bit tight, but they go in good, and that's what you want. And you want to snug that down. If you put a little uh, Loctite or sealer on there, it's okay. Now, on the long end of the threads, personally, I've always used Never Seize, which is graphite and oil, a little bit of grease, anything. I always lubricate the long end of the studs just to keep the life in them, as well as for your lug nut. And I'm very pleased to say that this ball and lug nut, let's just, uh, let's see if I can do this. Let's see if I can do the old pinch here. Okay, we're going to just go ahead and put it on a few threads just to simulate this. Now, we'll look at this again. Now, you see the actual... There's a space there. There's a little ring around there. It's because the ball seat is what's holding it, not some outside little corner or a small amount. Now this just came off the car, and I don't really see a line, and I only tightened it down with a hand wrench. Now, <clears throat> you'll note that uh, even though these are ball end, you'll see on a lot of cars, there's so many wheels available for these things. You have these 60 degree uh, type ends. And those aren't right for a uh, stock rim or that type of a rim. The rim has to be designed specifically for a specific type of lug nut and you need to follow the manufacturer's recommendation. This is a 12 by 1.5 but I wouldn't dare run this. It probably would work for a while but I, it's just not the way I roll. This particular unit is what I've used with these aluminum washers. If you use a like Douglas aluminum wheel for a sand car, 
this type of lug nut and washer is what you have to use. They have thick aluminum wheels, but it's nowhere. They're not DOT street legal, and they don't have any type of a taper on it, and it's a little bit thinner, a little bit different type of aluminum. They're trying to save weight. And so you need this washer, and you can see this is putting the contact pressure right where it is. This washer is actually damaged because I loaned it to somebody else for their wheels and they didn't have the right lug nut and they tightened the hell out of it. This is just aluminum and so it deformed a little bit. So they're not being used. These are like backups because I have the horrible habit of not throwing stuff away. There's always me or somebody else that may need it. Now here's an example of a wheel adapter to convert four hole to the five hole Volkswagen. I don't recommend using these on the street, although lots of people do. I think for one thing, cosmetically, it looks ugly as shit because you just got too dang many lug nuts and you got too many visual things going on here. I like a cleaner, uh, more sanitary look myself. In a pinch, uh, it'll get you by till you can get some money, but I wouldn't spend the $45 that they're asking for those things now. They come in many different shapes, forms, configurations for Chevy wheels, Porsche wheels, uh, all kinds of things. You can put all kinds of wheels on it, a lot of guys do, but they're show cars. They don't drive them. Very few people are dumb enough to drive these cars every day like I do. Most people like power steering and like having air conditioning and those types of things and they won't suffer with these things in the cold and the heat like I do and I just addicted and I have them and I enjoy them and they're I have so many parts and things around I'm trying to actually clean up my garage a little bit I got a cleaner but it's not any less stuff because as I was going through things and cleaning stuff there's not many things I just want to part with, like too many future projects and too many cars to keep running. So to stay on track, <clears throat> here's another option for you, and you'll see these online. These are an all-steel washer. You can use that on an aluminum wheel. There's no reason why you can't. And um, these are just spares. You, you're always, when you're out in the sand, you're always tearing stuff up. These things will crack. Um they'll bend you have to take a severe hit but that's why they're called accidents you don't plan on that stuff it just sort of happens and uh, airtime is always expensive that was always one of my favorite sayings when I was on the sand airtime's expensive airtime's expensive so the caution here is to be very careful about what kind of lug nut you're using and what indeed is a ball end lug nut and most of the the uh, the wheels, like we said, they were the the bolt that goes in. They're like this, either 14 millimeter or 12 millimeter, and they work great. But if you're converting to studs, you'd be extra cautious to make sure that you get the right style of lug nut. And don't just throw anything on there, and uh, it is going to be expensive. Now, I think this is a clean look. I didn't mind it before when I had the stock bolts holding my wheels on, but once I had an issue, and I, I really I really wasn't even going to do it to the front wheel here, um, I just think it, it looks it looks okay, it's, it's kind of nice. I suppose I could have a chrome cap or fresh paint on that thing, but I'm not, I'm not pained about it. And this is a heavy wheel and tire combination and so I think that one set of five lug nuts is a nice visual and it's gonna be strong enough and gives me peace of mind and as I continue once those uh, brake drum holes get worn you can wear them out and you can strip them and your lug nuts can go bad if you're a goofball like me 
and changing tires during the summer for different types of drives and events that you're going to go on. If I'm going to go on to the sand dunes, I'm going to put a different style of tire on it, a paddle tire. And then if I'm going to be in the dirt, I'm going to do something else. If I'm going to be on the streets, these seem to be working. They're pretty quiet for streets. And I just love the visual appeal, the way it makes the car set. And it's my thing and it's my car and that's the way i want it i just went back to stock tie rods and a stock steering damper and it seems like everything i change that goes closer back to or stock style of course these wheels aren't stock but you know machinery wise look i even put a stock shifter in there the, it the little t-handle job was jabbing into my knee at times I, I sat bow-legged and, and just spread my legs out, and on long rides it was jammed my knee. This is up and out of the way, more ergonomic friendly. This engine is a stock style engine. It lacks power horribly. I'm always reminded that it doesn't have the power of my other performance engines, but you know what? I haven't had to touch the carburetor. I haven't had to. Uh, I've checked the valves, but they don't need any attention. I got 2,000 miles on it. It just is running fine. I've never spent so much time below 2,000 RPM. And it just, I don't have to wonder if it's going to stop, start, and sputter. Um, it takes a little bit of time to warm up but that's because of the heater channels and it depends on the outdoor air temperatures. Uh, uh, points distributor it's a 009 a lot of people say oh yeah 009 is an industrial distributor it doesn't do the curves right well that's a 30 pick one uh, carburetor it doesn't take the vacuum ports not in the same spot as a uh, pick 34 and it works perfect and it works perfect with every dual carb application I've ever run it with and I haven't had any problems uh, I do know that I went and put a PIC 34 on my 1776 in the 66 and it works better with the vacuum mechanical Pertronics flamethrower SVDA distributor than it did with this plain old 009. Okay, so this is a lug nut video. It's not about that stuff. And I hope I put up the caution flags for you. I had one lug nut that gave me a warning flag so I did them all so that they'd be the same they'd be consistent uh, you don't want to get in a situation where you got one kind of wheel or one kind of lug nut on the front and a different kind of lug nut on the back don't mix and match that way keep things consistent and uh, it'll be safer you'll be happier it'll last longer and it'll look uh, nice because everything's the same and consistent so there's my, uh, I'll get off my soapbox now. I want to go for a little putt. It's a nice day. I need a little, uh, I need a little mental, uh, therapy here. I need a therapy ride. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Big W calls it. A little therapy ride. So that's what I'm going to do. And I just want to share this to you. Right now, before I forget, I'm taking my lug nut wrench over here. And as soon as I shut this camera off, I'm going to tighten that down, okay? We did not forget. We did not forget. And this kind of wrench uh, I use. But it's going to take two hands. I like to get it good and tight. And then uh, I'll check it again maybe tomorrow. All right? Thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy jeezy. Ow.